What's up, everybody? Good morning. I'm hoping this is working. There's a little issue, it looks like, with Google Hangouts, but it I, it seems to be recording, so hopefully we're going to continue with these SAT Khan Academy problems. Not sure if you can see me. If you're on Instagram, you definitely can see me. I just started the live stream there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump to our share screen here. And we are jumping into, oops, yep, all right. We are jumping into scatter plots. All right, so that is what we are tackling today. And we've got to get hustling too because, man, I have had a crazy day. Uh, I just released a new math music video on special right triangles yesterday, so definitely make sure to check that out if you haven't done so yet. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet either. Got all sorts of stuff coming your way, especially these Khan Academy problems Monday through Friday every morning. There we go. And again, I'm solving these problems live for the first time. I have not seen them before, so that's part of the fun. All right, so let's get going. The scatter plot to the left displays the percentage P of paper consumed in the United States that has been recycled from 1990 to 2012. So let's see, years since 1990, right? So 22 years. And this is percent of consumed recycled paper. Okay, so it's going up and up. Where T represents the years. Okay, which of the following equation best models the relationship between years since 1990 and the percent of consumed paper that has been recycled? I'm going to first turn this into a line of best fit just to get a rough idea, something like this. So it looks like our y-intercept should be around 35. Now look, a linear equation, we have a formula of y equals mx plus b but that B value is the y-intercept. Every single one of these has a y-intercept of 35. That doesn't help because that means we can't eliminate based on an incorrect y-intercept. Now we're just trying to nail down the slope. Like this is kind of tough because these slopes are all positive. Like they're not that different, right? So we got to see which one, like, you know, let's look at, let's say we are starting at 35. And then we go all the way, let's let's just choose another point here, like 22, and we're moving up to like 65, okay? So I'm gonna choose two points, zero, 35. Actually, I'm gonna choose 20, it'll make the numbers come up better. 20 and let's say 60, let's try that. It should give us a rough idea, 20, 60, okay. These are our two values. We want to calculate slope. Remember, we just subtract up or down. It doesn't matter either way. Uh, it's the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. 60 minus 35 is 25 over 20 minus 0, which is 20. So that's 5 fourths. And 5 fourths is about 1.25. Now, man, these are really close. I'm going to have to go with b, right? But I mean, 1.7.8, these aren't too far off. So I'm going to say B. I think that's going to be the closest one. It's by a narrow margin. So let's go ahead, and that's how uh, my approach is to solve this. Let's go ahead and see if that is indeed correct. And yes, and yeah, they did the same thing, line of best fit. And that's what they calculated. All right, moving on to the next question. Let's try this guy out here. There we go. Let's clear the board. All right, here we go. Ad Silla monitored gas prices at her local gas station throughout 2014. The scatter plot to the left shows the price. So what is this T throughout? So this is in one year, and this is the 365 days of the year on the horizontal axis. This is price per gallon in dollars. For one gallon of gas, on bear, and this is just for one gallon, where D represents days since January 1st, 2014. A function that models the data is shown on the graph. <clears throat> Which of the following best approximates the price for one gallon of gas on September 12th, the 255th day of the year? For one gallon, where's 255? This is 240. 255 is right here. Look, each one of these are 30 days, right? So in the middle would be 15 plus 240, which is 255. So here's 255. So we can take this all the way up, try to draw this nice and smoothly. And it's right here. 
and it's 350. I don't think there's much more to this question here. It's nice because we have the line of best fit and a point. Oh no, there is no point actually. It's the, the mistake I think that most people make is they don't use the line of best fit. Like they might choose one of those points that are closest to that value. And maybe, well, they're both around 350, but maybe you choose 345 or something. I'm gonna go with 350. Let's go ahead and answer 350. Let's see what they say and that is correct. All right, excellent. So again, remember how I mentioned last Friday, there's a big emphasis now on data analysis and statistics and all these things. And this kind of falls in line with that, understanding how to interpret data from a scatter plot. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the scatter plot to the left shows the number of moose M estimated to be living in Minnesota from 2005 to 2012. So this is a seven year span down here, a year since 2005. Which of the following equations best models the population of moose in Minnesota during this time period where T represents the years since 2005. Okay. This is a really messy um, graph because our line of best fits not going to be that great. I mean, look at this data. It's all over the place. Something like this. Uh oh, I have, oops, just erase that. Let's try it again. That was such a good line. That's a pretty good line. So we've got something like this. Mm, I'm going to say this is a bad. So look, here are y-intercepts. They did it out of order, but it's this constant right here. I'm going to say that 5,000 is terrible. That's just way off. Because look, that would be a y-intercept down here. It doesn't make sense. I'm going to say 8,000 as a y-intercept. Mm. Oh boy, I'm I'm gonna go with A just based on the Y intercept because I drew it around 9,000 and they're saying 8,500. I think that's a better Y intercept. Or maybe this one is 10,000 would be up here. You could potentially argue this too, like this. Mm, okay, so 10,000 and then let me think about this for a second. They have a negative, now, oh, these slopes are gonna be great, look at this. These two slopes are positive. That's ridiculous, right? The value multiplying the x, that's no good. Let's look at these two negative slopes. One, they're very different, so we can really figure this out here, not just on the on the y-intercepts. Negative 500. That means at every time we go one across, we should be dropping down by 500. So one across, down by 500. One across, down by 500. One across, down by 500. Uh, it's... Not bad. Like if we did here, boom, 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 boom. It just seems a little too shallow. Let's try this one. This is down by 1,800. So one across, down by 1,800. One across, you see how I'm kind of mapping this out? Down by 1,800. One across, down by 1,800. One across. Oh, no, I'm going down by 1,000. I'm sorry, 1,800 is much steeper. One across down by 1800. Let's do a different color so we can see this. One across, down by 1800. So we go here and here. One across, down by 1800. One, two. It's too steep. I'd say B is out. I'm gonna go with A, even though it's not perfect, I think A is gonna be our best choice. All right, let's give it a shot here. I also want to read their explanation. So let's see. Yeah, also they actually ch chose two nice points. Look at their line of best fit. It's, they did have it at 8,500 and that and they have a gentler slope than what I drew, so it makes more sense. But you can see, you can get the idea. You can, you can still make a pretty good presumption about it and get it correct even if your graph isn't totally perfect. Okay, question four. Question four, here we go. Only got two left. I got a packed day in front of me. So I gotta get these rolling. The scatter plot drawn at left depicts the price of one gallon of gasoline. Again, this is time. Time is usually on the x-axis. That's a nice thing. I mean, and that's realistic too. That's how we usually, that's a usual standard convention. It doesn't have to be, but it's how we usually do things. This is year since 1980. That's my birth year. Baller predicts depicts the price of one gallon of gasoline in the United States. 
y in dollars. So this is dollars here per gallon, right? One gallon, yeah. If x represents the number of years since 1980, the graph of a quadratic model, ooh, quadratic, that fits this data has a vertex at 17.24 and 1.33. Let's do this in red. 17.24 and 1.33. Say it. it's right around here. There's our vertex, something like that. So we got, they're saying quadratic, something like this. Quadratic is, remember, parabola kind of goes up like this. So hopefully I've done that okay. I've done it decently. What does the vertex tell us about U.S. gas prices? It, it tells us the vertex with a parabola like this that opens up, it's our minimum point. It's going to be, it's, it just means it's the year in, at which we have the lowest gas price. So it gives us our lowest gas price. In a nutshell, that's it. I like to answer these before I even look at the multiple choice. Now we can look at the multiple choice and see which one's the best. And what year is that? That's 17 years after 1980. So it is 1997. They all say 1997. Exact maximum. Uh, uh I said no, not maximum. It's a minimum. A is out. Reach its exact minimum value of 133. I'm gonna leave this one. Uh, I'm not sure about exact, um, but we'll we'll come back to that because the exact phrasing is a little weird. Uh, approximate maximum. No, it's not a maximum. Reach its approximate minimum. I'm gonna say this is good. Okay. Why do I say that? Why do I say that the exact is not good? Because we're using a quadratic model. It's like a line of best fit. It doesn't necessarily correlate to exact, like the vertex won't exactly necessarily correspond to a real piece of data. So it may not have actually been the real minimum, but it's it's an approximation based on the model we're using. It's, a, it's an important distinction when we're using these lines of best fit. So that's why I'm gonna go with D. Let's, let's just read the explanation just for fun because I think hopefully they'll they'll explain that. Let's see what they say. X, um, the vertex of the line tells us that the approximate year 1997, it just says, uh, it doesn't give a good, oh yeah. Make uh, Graphic models are used for making approximate predictions because the graphic model that best represents, okay, so whatever. So that's the general idea is lines of best fit or these models, they're approximations. And they're used for prediction purposes. Oops. All right, we got one question left and then we're done for the day. And then I go to get ready for school. I usually go to the gym in the morning and that's not happening today, unfortunately. Can I have to go at night, which I don't like. During the 2014-2015 season, a statistician collected data on professional sports teams. The scatter plot to the left shows his findings for the average minutes played per game and the average points scored per game. So this is minutes per game and how many points they score. Which of the following equations best relates minutes played per game X and points scored per game for P for players on team? Okay, so let's see. We're going to do a line of best fit. It's a linear equation for sure. Okay. And then let's say there's the x-intercept will be negative because you can see it's not hitting the x value, the x, excuse me, not x-intercept. Y-intercept is negative because if we carried this on down, it would happen somewhere around here, which is about negative 2. B and C can, D can be eliminated because they have a positive y-intercept, and that's wrong, based on our linear approximation. So it's going to be one of these. Now the only question is slope. One has a 2 slope, and one has a 0.5 slope. If we want, we can choose two points and do a quick approximation. I like the first point down here of, what is that, 3, 0. And I'll choose another point, maybe this one, let's say 15. What is that, 3315? I'll put it on top here. 3315. We want to calculate slope, subtract down. So 15 minus 0 is 15. That's the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's, 33 minus 3, which is 
30. And this is just one half. So it's 0.5 C. And, and that's really all there is to it. I just calculated the slope and, and that's the best approximation. We're gonna go with C, let's make sure we're right. And that's it. So, so it's basically, watch the data, watch the scales on the X axis on the Y axis and make sure you're calculating everything very carefully and meticulously. But other than that, that's, all, that's the gist of the scatter plot. So I hope that made sense for you guys. And again, there's something going on with my Google Hangouts today. So I don't think you're gonna be able to see me on camera. But anyways, I hope that was helpful guys. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want more SAT help with these Khan Academy problems. Again, Khan Academy, best resource out there for SAT practice problems. Hope you guys have a great day. Take it easy.